Scientists are tracking changes at the giant supervolcano beneath Yellowstone National Park, but they say there's no need to worry right now. The western part of the Yellowstone caldera is fading, said Ninfa Bennington, a volcanologist with the U.S. Geological Survey and lead author of a paper in Wednesday's issue of the journal Nature. The caldera is a large volcanic crater left over from Yellowstone's last major eruption, 640,000 years ago. It covers an area about 30 miles by 45 miles. The discovery means that the future of volcanic activity at Yellowstone is in the northeastern part of the park, and there's no chance of an eruption anytime soon. This volcanic system is not capable of producing that kind of eruption, Bennington said. For now, Yellowstone's mud pots will continue to boil, its hot springs will continue to steam, its geysers will continue to erupt, its earth will continue to shake and its fumaroles will continue to erupt. The vast underground magma pool beneath the historic park is still red hot, ranging between 1,247 degrees and 2,512 degrees, Bennington said. Yellowstone is one of the planet's largest volcanic systems, where plumes of molten core rise through layers of solid rock in the Earth's crust heating and melting them to form a reservoir of magma two and a half to 30 miles below the surface. In the past, this was often depicted as a single underground lava lake beneath the volcano, but newer mapping and imaging techniques have made it possible to see the complex reservoir system where the magma collects. Imaging techniques that have produced more accurate maps of the vast magma reservoir beneath the park show a large pool of deep magma leading to a shallower magma pool closer to the surface in the northeast, which is connected to the park's famous hydrothermal system. To figure out how likely a volcano is to erupt, volcanologists calculate something called the melt fraction. Melt fraction is the ratio of the amount of magma to the total volume of the crust. Think of the Earth as a sponge, Bennington said, but it's not water that fills the holes and fissures, but molten rock. In volcanically active areas, there is a higher proportion of magma than Earth. The higher the proportion of magma, the more likely an eruption is to occur in that area. The mapping was done using magnetotellurics, which measures the electrical conductivity of what's beneath the Earth's surface. Molten rock, magma, is a very good conductor of electricity, allowing for precise mapping of the areas where magma is stored. The tests were conducted over several months by scientists from the USGS, Oregon State University and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. What they showed was that while there are several large magma reservoirs beneath Yellowstone, they are separated from each other. It would be hard to mobilize them into a single eruption because they're not connected, Bennington said. It's still possible that the northeastern part of the park could erupt in a catastrophic eruption similar to the one Yellowstone experienced 2.1 million years ago. In that event, volcanic ash reached from the Pacific Ocean to Canada and Mexico. They tend to reoccur about every 600,000 to 800,000 years, according to the U.S. Geological Survey.
The most recent eruption occurred 640,000 years ago. It was known as a super eruption because it released about 250 cubic miles of material, 1,000 times more than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in Washington state. Right now, the cavities in the sponge aren't full enough of magma to support an eruption. For that to happen, the system would need more magma to fill more cavities in the crustal sponge. Once the system reaches a significant portion of these cavities filled with magma, an eruption could occur. Yellowstone is one of the most seismically active areas in the United States. Between 700 and 3,000 earthquakes occur each year in the Yellowstone region, most are not felt. This is due to the extensive network of faults associated with the volcano and surrounding tectonic features. Yellowstone earthquakes tend to occur in clusters close together in space and time. This phenomenon is associated with the transport of volcanic fluid along small cracks in shallow rock above the magma, a pattern that has been found at volcanoes around the world. Earthquakes occur along fractures in the Earth's crust where stresses from crustal plate movement and volcanic activity increase to significant levels. Rocks along these fractures become so stressed that they eventually slip or break. The energy is then released as shock waves, seismic waves, that reverberate throughout the surrounding rock. Once seismic waves reach the Earth's surface, they may be felt. Surface waves affect the ground, which may roll, crack, or shift vertically and or laterally. Structures are vulnerable to earthquake damage because the ground motion is predominantly horizontal. In Yellowstone, earthquakes help maintain hydrothermal activity by keeping the plumbing system open. Without the periodic interruption of relatively small earthquakes, the small fissures and channels that supply hot water to geysers and hot springs would likely become blocked by mineral deposits. Several earthquakes have caused changes in Yellowstone's hydrothermal system. For example, the 1959 Hebgen Lake, M7.3, and 1983 Bora Peak, M6.9. Earthquakes caused measurable changes to Old Faithful Geyser and other hydrothermal features. <laughs>